Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Wednesday. I want to talk to you really quick this morning from the topic of the importance of needs, the importance of needs. What am I talking about today let's jump in so for those of us who uh have done like e-commerce or you know you've had your own store whether it be brick and mortar or online we understand something about consumer behavior what is a consumer a consumer is a person who comes and consumes so if you have a service you're offering for example let's say that you are a plumber well guess what you understand that in order for you to make money and in order for you to stay into business in order for people to come to you and patronize your business and your service that you're offering guess what they have to have they have to have a need so if you are a plumber you understand that on a regular uh, day, the average person is not just going to call you, but when they have a need, like what happened to me uh, some months ago, I went to go turn the water off and I turned the knob, right? All of them. And guess what happened? The water kept running. What did I have to do? Immediately call a plumber to come and fix it, right? And so he came and turned the water off from the outside and did what he did and everything was fine. See, what happened was I had a need and because of my need, I then sought out the service of a plumber. Uh, when you go to the doctors, I'm sure, you know, let's just keep it real. When we go to the doctors and we have something that's wrong, we go to them and I'm sure that they are aware of some natural remedies that we could do to help us in our ailment or situation or whatever it might be, illness, right? I'm sure they know that if we would eat certain things and not eat certain things, that this would probably, this ailment would probably go away. I'm sure that they understand that whatever the ailment is that we're coming to them for, that there are some uh, less harmful remedies other than just giving us medicine, pharmaceuticals, right? But what do they understand? They understand consumer behavior and how do they stay in business so long as you are sick? Guess what you're going to do? You're going to make sure you get to the doctor. Now, there's some people who just love going to the doctor anyway. They're healthy and they just, doc, come check me out. you got those people. Well, many of us are not like that. Many of us will not go to the doctor unless we are not feeling well, unless we are sick and it's so bad. We've dealt with it so long that we've got to go to the doctor. What am I trying to tell you? Is that doctors understand when they give you certain medicines, guess what? You might be coming to them for a headache. Okay, that's great. You might be coming to them for a headache, but guess what? They give you a medicine, it's got 30 side effects, so it might relieve you of your headache, but they also understand them 30 side effects is going to keep you coming back. That is the importance of needs. When we have a need, people who understand consumer behavior understand that when there is a need, then people will seek out for service, for help, uh, for a product, right? If you're having issues with dry hair, that's your need. And so there's a business out there who has a moisturizing product and they understand that people who have dry hair will uh, think about, consider buying their product. This is why they are so big on giving out samples and coupons. If they could just get you to try their product, if they know that it's a good product and if it's uh, good work, there's a saying in the street, the street, the street saying is good work will sell itself. And so they understand that if they will give you a sample and you'll try it and the product is good, you going to come back. Why? Because there's a need and the product meets your needs. What am I talking about today? Really quick. Many of us feel that God is not doing right by us, even though we know that <laughs> Who are we to say something like that? You sitting here listening at me, that means you got internet, that means you have technology, you got a smartphone most likely, or a computer, you're breathing, you can see, and yet many of us still feel like God has slighted us because there is a thorn in our side, there is something that bothers us, there is something that we have gone to God and asked him for, and for whatever reason, God has not given it to us. We feel like we have been slighted, many of us, because we still have needs. What we want God to do, with which, you know, we're not going to run that game on God. You might can fool man, but you're not going to fool God. What we want God to do is we'll come to him and we'll say, Lord, if, if, if you would just, just give me a lump sum of money, right? I'm going to pay tithes. I'm going to keep coming to church. I'm not going to turn my back on you. If you'll just give me everything I need right now. 
if you'll just put me in a nice house, if you'll just make a way for my bills to get paid, if you would just, if you would just set me straight, right? Right now, if you'll just do it all at once, I promise I won't leave. I promise I won't turn my back on you. I promise I'll go to church. I promise I'll pay my tithes. What we want God to do is to give us everything right up front, everything that we want. We want God to give it to us quick, fast, and in a hurry. What's the problem with that? Well, we understand consumer behavior because we just talked about that. And so if God go ahead and meet all your needs at once, guess what happens? Nine times out of 10, we're humans. We ain't coming back. Right? This is what happens. If the doctor tells you, hey, start eating grapefruit, uh, start walking for this amount of time a day, cut out this meat, cut out this product, cut out the dairy products, cut out this. If the doctor understands that if he told you all of those things, the things that would really heal you and help you, well, guess what? Many of his patients will stop coming. The visit numbers will go down. Why? Because there's not a need, right? The plumber understands that he may like his customers. Customers. He may like the people who call on him in a time of need. He understands that. It will take a really special, honest uh, plumber. And when you do good business, you know, it's going to speak for itself and it's going to pay off in the long run. But it's going to take a special good plumber to come in to fix whatever your problem is and to fix it 100% and give you some tips on how to stop this stuff from happening again. Really help you and pour into you to help you to not need him. Well, the plumber nine times out of ten is not going to do that unless he has, unless you have favor with him. Why is he not going to do that? Because if he goes ahead and helps you solve all of your plumbing problems, helps you keep your plumbing and all this stuff together and put well together so that you won't need him, guess what's going to happen? You won't need him and he's not going to make the money that he wants to make. There is an importance in having a need. The reason why God often allows us to have a need, right, of some sort, whether it be financial, whether it be your health, whether it be a personal development of some sort, God is always going to let us have a need somewhere. And you know why? Because needs will drive behavior. Needs will keep you coming to him. Needs will make sure that you understand who your provider is. Needs will make sure that you are dependent. And this is what we were designed to be. We were designed to be dependent on God. We were not designed to be independent. We were designed to be dependent on God. And so many of us are looking and saying, God, why do you allow me to still have this need? Why did you allow me to have a child? Why did you allow, allow me to have three or four kids in a marriage and then my husband leave me and won't help me with the kids? Well, you know, there's your need. And your need, right? It's going to make sure that you keep going to the person and the entity, the being that supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory, right? So God allows us to have these needs to make sure that we don't get the, uh, the wrong idea that we don't need him. No, you do need him. You always have need of God. Your disability, your uh, whatever is not performing right in your body, whatever uh, illness you might have and you've had it for a while or an ailment and you know you have done everything that you can do, you've prayed, you fasted and God ain't moving that thing. Well, guess what? His grace is sufficient. The thorn in your side, whatever your need is that you continue to have, understand that it's necessary for you to have that need because when you have a need, you're going to go to someone or you're going to go to God who will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, right? That's scripture. Let me give you this scripture right here and I'm gonna let you go today. Turn with me your Bibles to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Let's go down to the 23rd verse, Matthew 9, 23. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and they're talking about Jairus was his name and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes. He said, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. News of this spread through all that region. So what happened is he performed a miracle and the news began to spread, especially to people who had needs. Check this. Let's go down to the 27th verse. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, have mercy on us, son of David. 
when he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. And Jesus healed them. What brought them to Jesus? It was their need. And so many of you feel that you have been slighted. You ain't been slighted. This is just a part of the process. Trust the process because your need, while it may appear that it is a disadvantage, it works to your advantage. Or here's a better way to put it. it all things work together for the good of those, right? So you know that it's working to your good. What seems to be a disadvantage is actually an advantage. And what it does is keeps you going to the one who can supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Hey, I love y'all. Happy Wednesday. I hope that word blessed you. I am Grace Amber. I will be right back on tomorrow with another word. Good Lord willing.